spent the last 20, 25 years of my life working on humanitarian issues. So I was interested in looking at how the relationship between the civil uh, agencies and the military is evolving in crisis situations. Crisis Commons is a, is a community of volunteers that use technology to help people in uh, times and places of crisis. So that could be someone um, that a community that's experiencing a hurricane or, or even an earthquake. And uh, volunteers from around the world get together um, and use their skills and resources and their, their social capital. I think first of all that the, the number and severity of sudden onset natural disasters is going to increase. We're going to see more mega disasters, more urban disasters, more places where disasters intersect with conflicts, where disasters intersect with technological failing such as in Japan. In those situations the military needs to be prepared to respond quickly and in collaboration with a whole range of civilian actors. It's a complex world out there. I think the military does some things very, very well. Other areas it needs to defer to civilian leadership. I think the, uh, the use of private military contractors will grow over the next couple of years. That will be driven by the drawdown of US military forces in both Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, there are projections that the use of security contractors in both of those countries purely for the US government will grow by up to 9% in the next five years. Um, those are big numbers when you consider that there are 40,000 contractors in Iraq that we know about and up to 100,000 contractors in Afghanistan. The Secretary of Defense has said that we should assume when we go to war about half of our force will be contract force. So that's for the essentially governmental functions that are part of any conflict. So that's pretty much the position of the United States right now. SecDef has signed the memo. Uh, our military planners are planning on that. People really appreciate getting information directly from the source. Um, and we have, a, we have uh, become known as an authority source of, of correct information on the internet. So people really appreciate not having to rely on the media to screen or to uh, filter information. They, just, they really appreciate being able to get the entire story from us. One of the, the pluses of humanitarian action is that you are able often to see the results of your work. It can be quite difficult work, but it's also rewarding in the sense that you are able to you know, be in sync with the communities that uh, are suffering from the consequences of crisis and conflict and you know, hopefully be able to do something to alleviate their, their condition. I think it's just the most wonderful work in the world. I think it's such a privilege to be able to help in one way or another people who are suffering the worst ravages of war, of disasters, and so on. And in those situations, you always see this wonderful outpouring of generosity and creativity and compassion from local communities in ways that's truly inspiring. I started off here with the Asia Pacific Center of Excellence uh, uh, two years back uh, and I feel very proud to be part of it in whatever way I can and really see the center go places and wish all the very best. Mm -hmm.